the candidates in alphabetical order. Kimball Carriou from the Communist Party of BC, Jenny Kwan, the New Democratic Party, David Malmo Levine, the BC Marijuana Party, Franklin Wayne Poley, the Party of Citizens, and Ken Wright, the BC Unity Party. David Malmo Levine from the BC Marijuana Party. Hi. Um, I consider myself to be an activist for poor people like Jenny and Kimball. And uh, like Franklin, I uh, consider myself to be a proponent of direct democracy. But what I'd like to bring to this debate is to focus on what I think is the biggest issue facing especially Mount Pleasant uh, is the war on um, peaceful, happy, hungry, harmless people. Uh, maybe up to a third of the Mount Pleasant riding smokes cannabis and, and many also grow ordeal. And uh, none of those people hurt anybody, but they continue to be, uh, have their homes raided, have their children taken away from them. Sometimes, like in the case of Daniel Posse, they get shot and our, our country tends to be moving towards a prison state or a police state, and I'd like to move it towards uh, drug peace, like in Holland and Denmark, and, and I'd, like, uh, I'd like the world to focus on this issue and end and, and the biggest, longest-running, most brutal war, uh, civil war in every country. Thank you very much, David. David, how would you handle the issue of ethics and integrity in government? Well, I, I really think we shouldn't be voting for people anymore. We should be voting on issues. Um, I'd like to set up some sort of direct democracy. There is something on the Marijuana Party ballot that backs citizens' initiatives and proportional representation. I think we could even take it further than that personally. I'd like to uh, have people, uh, federally and provincially, basically get together uh, 12 times a year, uh, set up what they want to vote on, and vote on it themselves. And any other decisions that a politician would bring to those meetings uh, would have to be ratified. So I'd like to see all all power to the people. Wayne, in your case. And David, what would you do if you were elected as MLA to improve the lives of off-reserve natives living in Vancouver, Mount Pleasant? Well, um, I would, like, what I know about the treaty process is that uh, it, it's a, a term used to define what the government would like the natives to do rather than any sort of um, sharing of power. In the case of the Gustus and Lake activists, who I think were part of a legitimate treaty process. They were um, quoting some old laws from the 1700s, but instead of uh, this government listening to them, they used landmines on them, and, and uh, the federal and provincial governments um, basically launched a war with the uh, Canadian Army equipment against these people rather than engage them in what uh, they wanted to do was negotiate, but using old laws to do so. So I think. Um, any government that comes in in this writing would have to take account and listen to what the natives wanted to do in terms of a treaty process. It's, it's common for us to refer to things as fudget budgets. The question for each one of you is that if you become the MLA for, for this writing, how do you deal, how do you plan to deal with the issue of proper financial administration in government? Let's start with you, David. Well, again, um, the reason why we don't have a proper administration and a lack of accountability is we're voting for people and we should be voting on issues by now. We can figure out ways to do that. Um, apart from that, I think we also waste a lot of our money when we abdicate responsibility onto our rulers. Uh, and they go off and do stuff like monopoly and protection racket. And the biggest one going on right now is the war on cannabis and cannabis users and growers and dealers. So if you eliminate the lack of accountability and you, you get uh, governing under direct public control, you'll, you'll eliminate a lot of that needless waste. Well, um, some people might argue there's no money, but I think um, most people here would argue that it's just a misplaced priorities and wasted money. Um, I'm sure uh, Kimball can uh, uh, have his opinions on where we're wasting the most money and, and um, the fast ferries is an easy one to point out, but I think where we're wasting the most money is on the war on drugs. Um, <laughs> there's hundreds of millions of dollars wasted on enforcement, and not more hundreds of millions of dollars looking after people suffering from pills, alcohol, tobacco, and hundreds of millions of dollars we're not taking in in taxes that we could be taking in with taxes, you know, 7% GST, 7% PST on all the pot that's uh, exported out of BC 
would, uh, would do us well and we could have all the nurses we want. Thanks very much. Uh, you probably should have asked me that question. The VC Marijuana Party handle this. Well, yeah, you know, there's tons of dollars wasted. Uh, <laughs> loosen up those bucks. Uh, we can have nurses and childcare. I, I happen to be the son of a single working mom. Uh, I know how important it is. Uh, our children are our most important resource, but uh, it, it's true that uh, we just waste all our money on protection racket and monopoly, and we could be having a incredible social system for everybody. David, well, how do you think child poverty should be addressed? Right, well, um, I mean, the, p the party is basically financed by right-wingers, but there's enough left-wingers in the party to, to uh, keep them committed to looking after people who, for some reason or another, aren't working. Like, we all go through periods of not working. But uh, what, what our party is also focused on is giving people opportunities. You know, not only looking after people who can't help themselves, but who people who can help themselves and who would like to help themselves and are being kept in an artificial state of poverty because there's monopoly on our health care system that won't allow herbalists to compete with pill pushers. And um, if you look at Holland and Denmark and now Switzerland and Belgium, there's huge opportunities in the soft drug tourist industry where you invite people up for a puff from the United Snakes. I think there's lots of good opportunities for people who, who want to work in, in a decent vocation if uh, we just stop this stupid war. I um, started to ask the question, I saw you sort of shake your head, put your hands in your, in, in your, uh, up to your face, and I am curious as to why you did that. Well, I, I mean, the, the, the heroin safe injection sites are the nice side of this thing, and you should focus a little bit on that because it's important not only to have safe injection sites so the people aren't missing their veins, getting abscesses and dying from that. Um, you also need heroin by prescription. It shouldn't be called heroin maintenance because I think that takes away the dignity of it and separates <coughs> it from other drug use. But I mean, this is a nice side of the thing. These are the good things about it. Why don't we look at the bad things about it? Why don't we look at one of the other four pillars? Uh, they're talking about bringing in uh, drug courts, which will force people into mandatory abstinence-based treatment programs for their preference to this over that drug. Um, these uh, treatment programs will consist of piss tests, uh, fines or community service, and uh, years of group therapy for your attraction to this or that. Uh, this is a horrible, horrible agreement. David, what do you make of the argument that the SkyTrain extensions are cannibalizing the bus system and hurting low-income people? Well, I don't think the bus system should be cannibalized. Uh, the, from what I understand, the environment's environmentalists I've talked to told me that elevated rail is uh, far cheaper than the, the SkyTrain system but still provides essential services. I think we should move um, more to elevated rail. Um, I'd like to just jump back because I felt I was uh, unfairly uh, kind of contextualized as saying do nothing about drugs. It's not my point. Uh, I'd like to point out that you should teach people how to do their drugs, make sure the drugs are of high quality and point out that some people don't need to be pushed into an abstinence program because they choose heroin. It's not glorifying their lifestyle to leave them alone. And some people, it's the most effective painkiller in the world. Like uh, my friend was dying of cancer and he could have really used good heroin. So I'd just like to jump back to that for a second. Well, we're now going to hear the candidates' closing statements. And David Malmo Levine, uh, I'm going to ask you to lead off. Please confine it to approximately 30 seconds. Okay. Historically, um, witch hunts and uh, pogroms and scapegoating have been necessary for um, rulers to maintain their power. As long as you're pointing out somebody else as the problem, no one will pay any attention to you. But uh, what the Marijuana Party stands for is ending the, the longest war in the world, the war against the people who use herbs without permission and, and the ones who supply them too. And, that would mean something. That would really do something. Thank you very much. Franklin Wayne Poli, part what about you, David. Well, I think whenever someone brings up direct democracy as part of democratic reform, people get the idea of, you know, Doris Day, the uh, alliance version of direct democracy. And I think, um, and rather than accept that's the only way to do things, we can figure out a way to respect human rights. We can figure out a way to take into account how concentration of capital affects democracy and we can overcome those hurdles 
and stop voting for people and start really voting on issues.